Today I'm taking a look at two lightweight headlamps from Nightcore, the UT27 and the NU25, the ultralight version, both of which have found a place in my ever-growing lineup of headlamps, but for slightly different purposes. As usual, I'll start by going over the features and the specifications of each of these headlamps, and then rate them based on a series of criteria, like fit and build quality, before describing my own use case for each, which I think is the part that you might find the most valuable. Because like with most headlamps, these both work quite well in some very specific situations, but fail in many others. The usual disclaimers, Nightcore did send me both of these headlamps, which I get to keep, but they had no input into what I would say. I do get a couple bucks though from the affiliate links below in case you decide to buy the headlamps, which won't cost you anything extra, but which does help out the channel. So let's start with the Nightcore UT27, which retails for about 55 bucks US. This is a lightweight headlamp designed primarily for trail running. It weighs just 73 grams, but can produce up to 520 lumens. Now that's its maximum output on turbo mode, intended for very short bursts. Say if you're searching for a flag way up ahead during a race and you need an extra boost of light for 30 seconds or so. But for practical purposes, this will give you up to 400 lumens on high spotlight mode for up to six hours. It's also got a floodlight capable of up to 200 lumens for up to eight hours. This assumes you're using the included lithium ion battery pack, because while the headlamp can also take three AAA batteries in a pinch, your burn times will be about 30% lower. And the thing to remember with most headlamps, especially these smaller and cheaper ones, is that they do tend to step down in brightness as the voltage drops, and sometimes as a heat protection mechanism. So even with the lithium ion battery, for example, you're likely not to get the full 400 lumens for a full six hours. And while this headlamp is dual beam capable, you can't run both beams at the same time other than in turbo mode. That actually seems to be where the 520 lumens come from. It's just combining close to the maximum outputs of both bulbs when you're in turbo mode. The battery pack is USB-C fast charging, which is great, and the enclosure is rated IP66, meaning it is dust tight and completely water resistant, but it can't be immersed. And it's impact resistant up to just one meter, something I will circle back to shortly. Of course, like any good headlamp, it has a locking function so that you don't accidentally turn it on while it's in your pack. Where this headlamp really stands out for me is in the bulbs. The spotlight it uses from Cree is a warm white light, 3000 kelvins, which is much better at penetrating rain and fog. I also just find a warm light much easier on the eyes and to be better at showing details on technical terrain. It's hard to explain the difference, but the second that you turn on the warmer light, you notice it right away. The floodlight is a Cree LED, that's a cooler white, but with what they call true vision, which has a more consistent throw to ease visual fatigue. And last but not least, it has a red light, which most trail running headlamps don't have. Red lights are really useful for when camping and doing other activities where you might wanna save your night vision, or maybe just not wanting to blind others with a super bright white light. I've had this headlamp for quite a while now, actually over a year. I like to really put these things to the test whenever possible before I review them. And in that time, I've used it quite a bit. So let's talk about that now. In terms of comfort and fit, I give this one pretty good marks. It's not the most comfortable strap, but it does the job and it's easy enough to adjust. The headlamp is so lightweight that you barely know it's there anyway. When it comes to ease of use, it's fairly simple to operate, which is really important to me in a headlamp for running. There is a button for the spot and one for the flood. Just hold down one button to turn it on, press it again to cycle from low to high. While it's on, you can press the other button to switch between beams or double tap either button to activate the turbo mode. Double tap either button while it's turned off to activate the red light mode. Single tap to switch to flashing red or hold down either button to turn off the red light. Just be careful that you don't forget that it's two taps to turn on the red, but you have to hold it down once to turn it off because if you double tap to try to turn it off again like i did once then you end up activating turbo mode instead at what will likely be the worst possible time when you were trying to save your night vision it's a small thing though but my one big pet peeve with this headlamp is the power indicator you press either button once to activate the power indicator which will then flash three times if it's above 50 percent 
twice if it's below 50, and once if it's below 10. Now I rotate between so many headlamps for different purposes that I can just never seem to remember complicated button combinations or what flashing lights like this are supposed to mean. So I wish instead that it had a simple power indicator like the NU25 over here does, which I'll talk about in just a minute. So I'm gonna give it a three out of five for ease of use. The build quality is fairly good given the headlamp's size and weight. There's always gonna be a trade-off when it comes to durability with a lightweight headlamp like this. But unfortunately, this little plastic hinge on the battery door did break off fairly early on. So that's definitely something they could improve on, although it doesn't seem to affect anything once the door is snapped back into place. So I'll give it a three out of five for durability as well, taking into account what it's actually been rating for in terms of impact resistance. Now for the price, I think this is excellent value because it does work quite well for shorter evening trail runs, especially with that warm spotlight. In addition to being great for hiking and camping and other sports, which brings me to use cases. Now this is not going to be something that I personally use anyway for ultra marathons like a hundred miler where I'm going to be running all night, but it is great for hiking or fast packing where you're mostly running during the day but where there's a chance that you might put in maybe a couple of hours in the dark in the morning or in the evening, in addition to needing something that works well at camp. And that's where the red light is gonna come in really handy as well. In fact, this is what I carried on our recent five night fast pack on the O circuit in Torres del Paine National Park in Chile, where it was really just one early morning that we needed headlamps while on the trail, but it was mostly for in our tents and while in the huts. And so I wanted something that was fairly small and lightweight. Okay, so now let's jump over to the Nightcore NU25UL, which retails for about $37 US. And there are two versions of this, the regular NU25, which comes with a hybrid strap, sort of part regular strap and part paracord, but I've got the ultralight version, which saves about 12 grams by having paracord only for the strap, but otherwise they're exactly the same. So in terms of specs, the NU25 has both a spotlight and a floodlight, which when combined can output up to 400 lumens for up to two hours and 40 minutes or 200 lumens for up to four hours and 40 minutes. The spot and floodlights alone can each output up to 200 lumens for up to four hours and 15 minutes. And then there are some low settings as well for up to 60 lumens that maybe you could use while around camp. And just like the UT27, it's got a red light mode to help save your night vision, but otherwise white light only on this model, no warm spotlight. It too is rated IP66 and is impact resistant up to one meter. It's also got USB-C fast charging with the port being super easy to access right on the side. But the built-in lithium ion battery cannot be removed, meaning you can't carry a spare with you or put in AAA batteries. But did I mention that the ultralight version here only weighs 47 grams? This thing is designed to be ultra light yet it still packs the punch when you need it. So let's talk now about my experience in actually using it, starting with comfort and fit. Now this paracord is not very comfortable, which maybe isn't fair because I don't think this version is really intended for regular use. That's where you would get the hybrid strap instead. But instead it's for carrying in case of emergencies where you hope that you won't have to use it, but you could in a pinch. I'll talk more about this when I talk about use cases. And like with the UT27, this is so lightweight anyway that you barely know it's there, but it can be a little bit hard to keep in place. So I will split the difference and give it a four out of five. You press the power button to cycle through the different brightness settings from low to medium and high with both bulbs on. Hold power again to turn it off. If you wanna use just one of the bulbs, you press the mode button to switch between either spot or flood. Hold down the mode button to turn on the red light and press power now to switch to flashing red. And then hold down power again to turn it off. So a little hard to remember, but basically power turns it on and off and adjust the brightness while mode switches between the different lighting sources. The power indicator though, they really nailed on this one. It's got four little lights, and as you would assume, all four mean it's at 100% battery, three is roughly 75% and so on. So I'd give this headlamp a four out of five because I still think I'd prefer to just have a separate button for each bulb to operate them independently, but overall it's fairly easy to use. 
The build quality seems surprisingly good for what it is. The hinges are pretty solid and there aren't any other moving parts since the battery doesn't open. Although I definitely wouldn't want to test out that impact resistance by dropping it on the floor, but that's the case with all these cheaper plastic headlamps. And at 37 bucks US, this thing is great value, provided that you're using it for what I believe it is truly intended for. And that's not going to be for heavy everyday use, because remember, you're only gonna get a few hours on high mode and the battery can't be swapped. And even if you plan on using it at low on 60 lumens for longer, maybe slower hikes, you're taking a bit of a risk not being able to carry a spare battery. So you'd have to then carry a completely separate spare headlamp instead, which kind of defeats the purpose of using such a lightweight headlamp to begin with. I think this model makes a lot more sense as an emergency or a backup headlamp itself. This thing is so small and lightweight that I've actually gotten in the habit of just stuffing it in my first aid kit whenever I go skiing or running in the backcountry. And that's actually why I think everyone should own something like this or maybe something like the Petzl Bindi. This can become the spare headlamp that you carry at night as a backup to your primary headlamp, say something like the UT27 here, or maybe something more powerful like the Phoenix HM65RT or the Petzl Now RL, both of which I've reviewed on my channel as well. It would also then become your emergency headlamp that you keep tucked away in something like your first aid kit at virtually all times. Because ideally, we should always be carrying a light source for emergencies when in the backcountry, even during the day. So there you have it, two more lightweight headlamps for you to consider adding to your quiver. And if you have any experience with either of these two headlamps, tell me about it in the comments below. I've got a few more videos about headlamps from brands like Phoenix and Petzl, as I mentioned, which you can find on my channel. And be sure to subscribe for more videos like this.